The answer to the post-time brain teaser? Alf Thorson has won more world driving championships than any other in harness racing history, with four titles. In fact, the trophy for the WDC is now named for the Norwegian legend, who died at a young age of 46. Alf's nickname was Mr. Goldfinger, and he accomplished virtually everything a trotting reinsman can possibly achieve. And his spirit and drive for victory are celebrated at each World Driving Championship. Welcome back to Post Time. Some horses surprise us with their love to compete. Some horses surprise us with their love for life. And still others surprise us with their love for us. Let's meet a horse who has come through with all three. One of the reasons I wanted to have Colleen on the show is not only because I really respect her as a horse trainer, but also she's got this huge love, passion, dedication to the equine as a whole. So I wanted her to talk to everybody about one horse, Coco Count, uh, who was very sick. So I'm going to have you kind of take over the story, Colleen, uh, if you can go back. Because this is taking place like a few years ago, but I thought it was such a great story. I still wanted to talk about it. Um, if you can remember, when was he sick? What happened? I'm going to let you take over the story. Okay. Okay. Coco is six now. Um, it happened when he was two. Um, he had raced like once or twice in a Pennsylvania sire stake. At the time, there was a really bad virus going around that a lot of the two-year-olds were getting sick from. Um, so he was pretty sick for about a week at the farm. and. We had our vets out and they were treating him and he wasn't really getting better so we uh, made the decision to send him to New Bolton. He ended up staying there for about a month. He was in really bad shape. His kidneys were really compromised and his colon was really compromised. They had him on plasma and fluids and morphine patches and he, he was just in really bad shape. Um, it was kind of touch and go like one day the vet, vet would call and say it looks like he's going to be fine and then two days later no, it doesn't look like he's going to make it. So it was really an emotional roller coaster. We loved the horse, and um, he hadn't shown much, but he, he just kind of had a spirit about him. By the end of the month, we had probably put about 20000 into New Bolton. They kind of thought he was a good candidate for surgery. They wanted to take out part of his colon, but there were so many risks involved. We couldn't really justify the surgery and putting Coco through it, not knowing if it's going to, you know, do the trick. So we made the decision to bring him home. We didn't really know if, if it was a good call or not, but we kind of had to just take our chances. And he ended up being just fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we, you know, we had to check his blood on a regular basis, and he was fed, like, every six hours, and my mother and father and everybody just really catered to Coco. But he just was fine. We, um, I took him back to New Bolton, like, uh, a month later, and they were just shocked that he that he they said he's healed. <laughs> so um, so that's pretty much the story of Coco. That he that was when he was two. He ended up racing, I think, a couple times when he was three, and then his four-year-old year he had a great year. And then he's had other problems since then. He's had some throat surgeries and he tore a suspensory. But we love him. He's he's been ridden and he's kind of like part of the family at this point. So that's Coco. That was one of the things I'm so glad that you shared all those details because I think some people like that aren't in the equine world don't realize how advanced technology is like we know about you know humans and how advanced like medicine is but with horses you know it is just amazing now I know one of the problems with horses like if they um, break something and um, you know they have to put screws and bolts in it you can't tell a horse uh, yeah you need to be on bed rest and just lie there for however many days or whatever you know you can't communicate with horses that way however as a veterinarian they're able to do all these different things to help your horse right. just by some kind of knowing what's going on through x and whatever. Are you amazed by that? It amazes me uh, every day. It is amazing. I mean, New Bolton is, is the best place, you know, to take a horse that's in that kind of shape. I mean, he just had 24-hour, you know, supervision, five people on him at all times, and, you know, he, he was in ice boots, and they just, you know, everything he could possibly get to help the horse. It was mostly just supportive care because they were just kind of trying to buy time for Coco to heal himself. They can do amazing things. I mean, just putting plasma and fluids and 
running a million tests and <laughs> anything they could do for them, they did. And the other thing also talking about like how much money that you and your family put into this horse and it goes to show you how much like we love our animals and how much we you know want our animals to be healthy and everything. So of course you know that I know your parents Wilma and Paul and I don't think I'm going out on a limb by saying this. I think that your parents would say that you're probably the reason that the horse is alive and if, if not alive but at least the fact that he's he's racing and um, um, he did, you know, so well. I mean, what do you think? I mean, do you give yourself that much credit or not? Um, I think the credit goes to Coco for having this amazing will to live. I mean, the vets were shocked, you know, by his recovery at New Bolton that he just has this. He's just a very strong-willed horse, I think. You know, we made a decision to take him to New Bolton and give him the care that he needed. So I guess we take the credit there. But, I mean, the you know, the credit goes to Coco for just wanting to be here and wanting to race. <laughs> <laughs> and wanting to be with you. I mean, I think they totally know. Don't you think so? I mean, when you're with him that many hours a day, oh, yeah. they absolutely know you. And I think that they grow an attachment to you. He, I mean, he seems especially so. And probably just because of all the care that he's had and all the special needs. Um, but yeah, Coco, he's, you know, he just seems really smart and he, he definitely knows what's going on and knows how to get his needs met. And, you know, he knows who his people are, <laughs> who will get him what he needs. <laughs> so. Oh, he knows who his entourage is. So that's the important <laughs> thing. Colleen, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you, Heather. It was fun. <laughs> uh, did she really mean that? I'm not so sure. But <laughs> no, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for spending the past half hour with me, and let's go over that live racing schedule from Harrington one more time. You can see live harness racing Sunday through Thursday. The post time's at 5.30 p.m. each racing evening. And Wednesday is a great night to come up to the clubhouse for dinner. Snow crab legs are featured on the buffet. So you aren't into seafood. Believe me, there's something for everybody on this delicious menu. Also, come out to Murphy's Race Sports Book and Grill. Watch sporting events and racing from all over the country on our large screen TVs. Enjoy a great meal while you wager on live Harrington action or all the action going on via simulcast, both harness and thoroughbred. Remember, there's always free parking and free admission at Harrington Raceway. For more information, call 302 398 race or visit them on the web at harringtonraceway.com have a wonderful week i will see you at the track and god bless <laughs> this is called multitasking when you shoot yourself for your own show and you're the host. <laughs>